So hi everyone. Okay. So yeah, thanks everyone for the uh, invitation. Um, my name is Li Yizhang, and I'm doing MS in Data Science at Columbia University. So yeah, so today I'll talk about our newly proposed method, transport score climbing, which is variational inference that uses the forward KR divergence as objective and adaptive neural transport. So this is work done jointly with Christian Nason, who is also in the Netherlands, and David Bly. So here's a breakdown of the introduction section. So we'll first quickly motivate probabilistic modeling and then discuss several inference methods. Uh, the first two, a variational inference and MCMC are sort of uh, important and classic methods for inference. And the Markovian score climbing is recently proposed. And then we'll relate them to, to our math method, which is transport score climbing. So here are um, two examples of probabilistic models. And in this work, we'll be interested in very general kinds of probabilistic models, including those that are highly complex, such as parameterized by neural networks. And uh, the first one should may maybe um, very familiar to many. It is a state space model or HMM. And this is an example of probabilistic model representing human structure knowledge by representing latent variables Z in a, a temporal or sequential manner. And now this is uh, useful for many types of data. In fact, I've also done previous work that uh, where the latent variables represent a sequential graph generation process, or more specifically a tree generation process and the reviewed variables, uh, the, the reviewed data X represent the uh, data in the leaf nodes and doing inference on that, uh, which was uh, quite, a, quite an experience. And then the second model here is a variational autoencoder, where we believe that the images are generated from latent factors. I would not want to specify what exactly the latent factors are, which are the Z here on the left. But uh, we want to parameterize a complex probabilistic model P of X given Z. And then, uh, and then basically learn the factors and the relations between the revealed image data and the, and the latent factors. Now, our main goal in probabilistic model is to approximate the posterior distribution, which is a distribution of the latent variables given data. So we first know the model. And then the prior, the model can be parameterized by learnable parameters data. And then we want to find or approximate the posterior distribution. While the two terms in the numerator will be previously defined, the denominator requires an integration that is intractable, which is why this cannot be solved analytically for some complex models. And so we sometimes resort to approximate inference to approximate the this distribution. And a related goal in this work is also model learning. So to find the parameters of theta for the, uh, for, for, for the likelihood model. And in the VAE example or variational encode example before, the theta would represent the neural network weights, et cetera. So, so, so yeah. Um, so VI and MCMC are two uh, important methods for approximate inference. And we'll just first do a quick recap of these methods. So VI posits a trainable distribution Q. And uh, it will use this Q to approximate the true posterior P. And, um, and how it approximates is that it try to minimize the reverse KR divergence between Q and P which is a sort of a measure of the difference between these two distributions. And what this framework, the minimization of reverse KL, uh, what this offers is computational convenience. However, it sometimes may underestimate the uncertainty in posterior P. 
And MCMC is a different method that samples from a Markov chain whose stationary distribution is the true posterior. So it solves the previous problem by, um, you know, it, it can pro produce good samples if run long enough. But in order to produce such samples um, that ameliorate the problem of underestimating uncertainty in VI, it may take very long. So it is often computationally demanding and it is additionally difficult with stochastic mini batches, which is quite essential for, uh, for, for training large data sets. So a method that attempts to bring together the best of both worlds is recently proposed, uh, Markovian score climbing. So it is VI, but it does a different objective, which is called a forward KL divergence. Um, an advantage of doing that is that if you can evaluate the forward KL, then it often can, uh, can uh, find posterior distribution without asymptotic biases. But the challenge is that to evaluate the forward KL, we need to compute an expectation over P instead of Q, which is difficult to compute because P is something we do not yet know. And uh, it uses an MCMC chain to try to sample from the expectation over P. Um, and an issue with this method is that it may explore the sampling space too slowly with the MCMC chain. But we propose a transport score climbing. Um, we still want to utilize the advantages provided by VI with forward KL, and we, which, which has asymptotic guarantees theoretic guarantees, but um, meanwhile, we want to explore the sampling space more efficiently. We provide a roadmap for, for, for this method, uh, the main elements of our method. So it is VI with forward KL, and we estimate the expectation over P with an underlying HMC. But uh, we can improve the HMC sampling trajectory by warping its sampling geometry with a transport map, which is a function derived from the approximation Q. So here is a dynamic or cyclical training process. Um, a better, trans better transport maps will lead to better HMC sampling because um, HMC will sample more efficiently if the sampling space is simple or transformed. And, and so, so so, and then better, more efficient HMC sampling will train a stronger variational distribution, which then act as a better transport map for future HMC sampling. And this is a high level uh, idea of the method. And, now, and um, welcome to interrupt uh, anytime for questions, et cetera. So, so now um, section two, background, where we'll discuss the following three methods. And, uh, and here we'll get into a bit more technical details and also define mathematical notations. So variational inference, um, here's an um, image this, that describes variational inference from the following article. So it is essentially inference as optimization by training Q, which is parameterized to be close to P. So for example, we first posit a distribution Q whose forms can take this whole space in this oval here. And the true distribution is out there. So we may not necessarily contain the true distribution. And uh, it is in, in this notation, it is parameterized by new. So we randomly initialize it here, which may be far from the true posterior. And so we basically want to solve this optimization problem by updating new so that we get to a new star. And so, and we hope that um, by doing that, the Q of Z given new star will then be close to the true posterior. And the closeness is measured by the reverse KL divergence. And then VI with forward KL basically still uses the, the previous framework, but the objective is changed to the forward KL divergence. And here's a definition of the forward KL. So, and I'm um, skipping a few algebraic steps to minimize this objective. 
the gradient with respect to the variational parameters is the following. So the key challenge is still uh, evaluating the expectation or sampling from the expectation over the true posterior. And um, Markovian score climbing samples from this uh, using an MCMC kernel. And you know, be before we discuss and the um, HMC with transport map, I'll first talk about normalizing flow which is an, a very helpful method for variational inference. So it provides flexible forms for Q with the change of variable technique. And this form is particularly relevant because they can be used later for transport maps for HMC. And because they are quite fle flexible, sometimes they can act as efficient transport maps. So the mathematical definition is it's this, and, and the first step is very simple. It's just a random variable epsilon with a simple distribution Q naught, oftentimes as an isotropic or standard Gaussian. And then we introduce a function for transformation. And by definition, because epsilon is a random variable, when we apply a function T to this epsilon, the distribution of T of epsilon is this on the right, right hand side. Uh, these are all known terms, so that this is already defined, and then the determinant, and this is a determinant of the Jacobian matrix of this function evaluated at epsilon. And um, usually, we want to find a function whose uh, determinant, whose whose determinant will be um, easy to compute. In fact, often uh, linear in the number of dimensions. So now we discuss neurotransport HMC. So Hamiltonian Monte Carlo is an MCMC method that uses momentum variables to simulate the Hamiltonian dynamics. And some works discover that HMC can run more efficiently on simpler spaces, such as standard Gaussian. And then we can warp the target geometry into a simpler geometry and then run HMC more efficiently. So here is a um, technical definition of, of neural transport agents. Okay, so before, before going into this, uh, here's an example of the different geometries. So we are trying to fit a funnel-shaped distribution, you know, lying horizontally like this. And then this is a sampling space of HMC where the target distribution of funnel distribution is warped by a Gaussian transport map. And because it's Gaussian, a simple function, you see that the sampling geometry is still funnel shaped, so still kind of difficult, but the scale is kind of, the axes are kind of scaled between zero and two in, in, in this sort of window. And here is fitting the same distribution, but um, now it's warped by an IAF transport map, inverse autoregressive flow, which is neural network parameterized. So here, the sampling space of HMC becomes almost, um, becomes very similar to a start standard Gaussian distribution. And turns out HMC can run efficiently on this sort of space. And um, defining this method, uh, it can be broken down into several steps. We first define a transport map as a parameterized function T, and then define the warp space by the changing variable. So Z naught equals to the inverse applied to the actual random variables. And then define the target distribution in the MCMC algorithm or HMC algorithm as a distribution of Z naught. Right? This is doable, right? Because in MCMC, what we, you just need to input a target distribution and the target can be proportional to the, to the true you know, stationary distribution such as the P of Z given X. By proportional, we can do a, for example, a joint distribution P of Z and X, which is, um, which can be specified. And because this is doable, when, when you apply a function to this random variable, the normalized, the unnormalized distribution of Z naught is still uh, computable and can be inputted into the MCMC algorithm. So, so we are now working at the uh, working on the distribution of Z naught, 
and each Z0 generated by MCMC at each iteration is then passed to the transport map with this. And then we shall return, um, you know, the each Z0 generated passed to this transport map will return all the Zs at each iteration. And this will be, be essentially uh, the same as coming from the true target distribution as a stationary distribution. But, um, uh, but will likely have faster mixing because it now runs on the, on the simpler geometry. And um, so this work, Hoffman et al. 2019, introduces neutral HMC, which basically implements the above idea and uses both AFI and neural, neural network transport maps. And then they pre-train this, these transport maps, so basically these T uh, functions, Using, v, using the traditional VI, VI using reverse KL. So, so now we can uh, discuss our method, our proposed method. So here is a diagram of it to, uh, giving, to give it an overview. So the HMC, uh, generates the latent variables. So, th th this generation here um, abstracts away the process of you know, generating on the warped geometry and then using the normalizing flow function to transfer it back to the latent Z. So, it generates the latent Z. And then these latent Zs will sample the intractable expectation and so train the normalizing flow or the variational distribution. And then an improved uh, normalizing flow will then walk the HMC geometry. So this is a cyclical process. And in each um, warping of the HMC geometry, we will use the most recently updated normalizing flow. So, so, so that's why it is a, a dynamic training process. And um, yeah, so to define this method, we first define the variational family to be trained with forward KL. Um, we let epsilon come from the standard Gaussian, and then we also define T as a parameterized function. And often follows one of the following forms, A phi, inverse autoregressive flow, real NVP. The last two are normalizing flow methods that are uh, neural network parameterized. The so real NVP has the advantage compared to IAF of being able to uh, having quick inversion computation, linear in dimensions. So this method will require the inverse computation. So real MVP can be very helpful here. And then we define the variational distribution as the distribution of T applied to epsilon. So a function applied to this random variable is our variational approximation. And now we define the target distribution of the underlying HMC that is used to evaluate uh, or sample from the expectation. And the idea is that if our variational approximation Q is close to P, then the inverse function applied to Z will be close to standard Gaussian and then be easy to sample from by HMC. So, so, um, the, so, so yeah, I'll first go through the definition and then state an intuitive idea of why um, now the um, geometry will then be similar to the standard Gaussian. So we define the target of HMC as the distribution of Z0, uh, similarly to the neutral HMC, inverse function applied to the Z from the true target. And this distribution can be written out um, up to a normalizing constant. The distribution of Z0 is the following, which still just uses the change of variables identity, you know, a, a function applied to, to a known random variable. And these terms are known, right? So this is basically the joint distribution or likelihood times prior. And then this is determinant of Jacobian of this function T evaluated as Z0. So the idea of why now that uh, this distribution will be close to standard Gaussian is this. So let's assume that Q has been trained to be pretty close to P. And so by definition, because how, by, by how Q is defined, 
the inverse function applied to a random variable that comes from Q is exactly the standard Gaussian by the definition of the normalizing flow. And so if Z is instead from P and P is close to Q, we still expect the Z naught is will be close to the standard Gaussian. And then here is how gradients for the forward K objectives are found. Uh, so this is the objective from the previous slides. You know, HMC generates the uh, Z naught on the warp space, and then we just apply it, uh, apply the transport map to this random variable, and then it will be a sample from the true um, for, from the expectation of the true posterior, and then we just plug it in, and then we can then train the lambda using any optimizer. Before we uh, look at empirical results and an overview of the integrated algorithm, another problem is model learning. So the likelihood model P of Z given X and theta can be very complex. And we also want to train these parameters. And by being able to take samples from the true posterior, we can use maximum likelihood to train model parameters. So variation order encoder, as it was proposed, for instance, train these variables by doing a lower bound uh, on, the, on, the, on, on the log marginal likelihood, which sometimes leads to undesirable properties. And um, here, we, here we use maximum likelihood. And then using the Fisher identity, uh, after a few algebraic steps, we can find the PM. Um, gradient of the marginal likelihood and written out as an expectation over the posterior. So this is basically what we need on the left-hand side, gradient of the log marginal likelihood in order to do maximum likelihood. And so it is equal to the expectation over P of this and the joint is, is computable. And so here is the whole algorithm. Um, um, so these are the inputs, uh, probabilistic, probabilistic model, uh, normalizing flow, HMC with the target defined. And th this, this can be uh, written out as, uh, as mentioned before. And then step sizes with the parameters randomly initialized. So at, uh, in the loop, at each iteration, we generate from the HMC kernel on the warp space, and then we uh, like in neutral HM HMC, we uh, apply the function to it to get a latent variable sample. And then we want to stop the gradient here because the expectation is outside of the gradient. And we don't want the uh, auto differentiation program to, to, to uh, do gradients over this section. So having a sample Z, we now apply it to, to those objectives. So this is basically the forward KL objective, and this is a maximum likelihood objective. Then we just use any optimizer to do these gradient updates. And then in the end, we just um, use the inverse function to and, and apply it to the recently uh, generated Z. And then this lambda is updated. So that's why we need to do this again. And then, so the, so the next, the next uh, iteration for the HMC will use the updated lambda to warp the space. And so we also want, um, want to apply the most recently updated lambda and then use this inverse function to uh, apply to Z and, and use this as the, uh, the current state for next iterations HMC. So a crucial element is dynamic training. Um, the transport map is refined for HMC at each iteration. So we always want to use the most newly updated lambda at each HMC space transformation. So, so um, HMC with a better transport map mixes faster. And then this faster mixing will then be conducive to training the to the future transport map. And now we look at empirical evaluation. 
uh, we look at uh, three types of data sets. And in this presentation, I will discuss the synthetic data and variational autoencoders. So here is um, the synthetic data. There are two distributions we want to fit. The first one is called Neo's funnel distribution. So all the orange points are samples from, many samples from the, the, the true distribution. Um, so on the first half, we have a Neo's funnel distribution. And here we have a banana shaped distribution. The first one is particularly hard to sample from by HMC. And the, the blue and the yellow density map is basically points sampled from the fitted variational distributions. And on the left is uh, results by VI, traditional VI, so using the reverse KR divergence. And on the right is our method. So for Gaussian distribution that cannot you know, capture this shape, um, VI will very much underestimate the uncertainty by giving this variational approximation and, 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 and this. So in the Gaussian cases, uh, TSC will better represent the, uh, the uh, uncertainty of the true um, distribution. And um, on this line here and this line, so the second and fourth rows, um, the variational family is um, inverse autoregressive flow, so very flexible. Um, and then they, they are able to kind of re recover the original shape. Um, on the funnel case, the two are barely discernible, but uh, in the in in the banana distribution case, uh, on the tail here, the TSC um, recovers it slightly better. And uh, in the next slide, we shall show we shall look at the uh, the um, exact um, quantified uh, data from 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 this these is fittings. So uh, any questions on the interpreting these um, plots? Okay, great. Uh, not, uh, not really, this is quite clear. Uh, I'm just wonder how much, because the low dimensional case, it's uh, is its own thing. Uh, and then actually uh, Monte Carlo works pretty well in itself. Although, yeah, this case is challenging. Uh, so I'm curious, did you try to have like uh, products of this problem? So to have, uh, to see how it scales in eight dimensions? Um, no, for the synthetic data, we only used two dimensions. Okay, because I could imagine the uh, regular variational inference to be quite more sample efficient than the score climbing, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't have too much of an idea, but. Uh... Yeah, yeah. In general, VI is uh, more efficient than TSC, yeah. But in the variational autoencoders, we'll, we'll also talk about actual like run, compare the running speeds as well. But even that is probably quite low dimensional, right? Uh, but let, let's see, I guess. Yeah, the, the VAE, uh, uh, we will use like uh, 64 to 128 dimensions. So, oh, okay. uh, yeah. Yep, and um, so yeah, back to the uh, synthetic data. So, uh, so all of these are the IAF variational families. And then the first table is a funnel distribution and the second table is a banana distribution. So, uh, and here we list the ground truth standard deviations of each of the two dimensions of the uh, original distributions. And um, so, 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 and now in the, in the table are basically the standard deviations of computed from many samples of the um, sampled from the fitted distributions. And then in the parentheses are basically the, the, the standard error of these measured standard deviations. Um, so, so in both of, uh, in both of these cases, um, Transport score, score climbing's values are closest to the uh, to the uh, ground truth value of the, these uncertainties. Right, right. We use this table because um, the um, we use these these samples because the um, IAF uh, standard deviations on each axis is hard to uh, 
can, cannot be computed. So we use these samples to approximate. And this is a funnel distribution, Gaussian uh, family. And then we have two dimensions. The first graph is the first dimension and the second graph is the second dimension. So um, the, on the first dimension, the standard deviation um, is, is uh, the ground truth standard deviation is this. And then blue, solid blue is the um, uh, transport score climbing. And then the, the solid red is the uh, variational inference. Uh, for the mean mean, param mean parameters are here, the uh, mu parameters. So, so for the mu parameters, they both do a pretty good job on that. And then here are the results for the variational autoencoders. And uh, we, we, we do it on three data sets. So um, static MNIST and dynamically binarized MNIST and then CIFAR 10. So um, these tables probably need some explanations here. And then and, uh, we basically measure the predictive performance by doing the log marginal likelihood of the, on the test data. So the larger or less negative, the better. And then elbow VI is basically variational autoencoder as it was introduced uh, using the variational lower bound um, re uh, related to the reverse KR divergence. So basically the Kima and Wild in 2014 and resend at our 2014 paper is the elbow VI here. And then neutral HMC, right? And then IW is IWAE, um, IWAE. Um, which is a Berda at our 2015 paper, importance weighted autoencoders, which is also an important baseline. And then this is a Markovian score climbing that uses the um, conditional importance sampling kernel. And if we add a W here, it means that we do a warm up on the encoder pre previous to training. And, and by the way, the encoder is basically the uh, variational approximation here. The Q here. Um, and yeah, and um, on these data sets, um, the transport score climbing is able to achieve highest um, test log marginal likelihood. And in terms of running time, uh, in our implementation, transport score climbing takes about 1.5 to 2 minutes per, per airport. Um, and these are trained mostly for 500 epochs. So this time, um, uh, this amount of time is about equal to the um, I-way using 50 samples. Uh, 50 samples is a number suggested in the original paper. So, so this is comparable to, so our method, the runtime is comparable to both neutral HMC and I-way that uses 50 samples. And and yeah, any uh, question? Yeah, sorry. In the in your method in the TSC, right? You use these normalizing flows uh, as you showed earlier. Yes. Uh, but mm, what, what I'm wondering is if you compared also with the uh, uh, variational encoders with inverse other regressive flows. Oh uh, yes, they should be better than this, the very uh, initial uh, variational encoders, right? Oh yeah, these um, the, these uh, VAE and IWE here also use the same normalizing flow. Okay, so they have the inverse other regressive flow posterior in that case. Uh, yes, yes, oh. that's right. Thank you. Yeah, so basically, you know, the data and then the inference network map it to uh, Z naught, and then we apply the normalizing flow on this Z naught to get Z. And so this is the same for all of these methods. Okay, thank you. Uh, aren't the results slightly disappointing? I mean, you get a bit of improvement, but it's a, it's a substantially more complex method than the regular VI. And you get barely, 
better results. Uh, you mean compared to which one? To VI, to standard elbow VI, because standard elbow VI is substantially simpler, right? Yeah, yeah, this is mostly uh, incremental performance, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, as uh, it seems that my intuition was a bit correct that in low dimension, you do much better when, when you go in higher dimension, the, the performance increase di diminishes which I think it will make sense because it's very, it's quite difficult to be, I mean, it's difficult to really sample the posterior in I dimension and then the very locality of the of elbow VI is, is less of a problem because it becomes very difficult to get the global coverage. Yeah, yeah, compared to uh, VI, the HMC advantage is more substantial in the low dimensions. Yeah. The mixing is easier too in yeah. the low dimensions, right? Mm. But still, I mean, you get improvements to gout, so that's interesting. Yeah. And they, they all use the same architectures, which is relatively simple uh, in these cases. Uh, so basically like uh, three to four layers of convolutional neural networks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, here is just a sanity check, you know, the images uh, generated from uh, on the MNIST data set, the handwritten images generated from the prior. So these are not cherry picked. So these are just, you know, uh, initializing randomly from the standard Gaussian and then applying the likelihood to, to that. Um, and um, so this is mostly a sentence check. So visually they are of roughly equal quality and kind of uh, different styles. So yeah, uh, um, yeah, and then more implementational um, things like uh, hyperparameter tunings and uh, architecture will be uh, uh, can can be found in the in the paper. So yes, uh, that is the end of uh, presentation and. Uh, Happy to answer any additional questions on any of these.